Hey folks, it's time for Twip Pro Photo Critique number 77. This is Twip. Hey, welcome back to another Twip Pro Photo Critique. This is critique number 77, and I'm here with my good friend, Mr. Troy Miller, to step through some of the latest submissions to the Twip Pro category uh, in inside of the Twip Pro community. Hey, Troy, uh, last week, I think this was your suggestion, right, to go with with mm-hmm. iPhone as the as the uh, the topic for these and yes, uh, yes, so it, I, it's your suggestion <laughs> slash fault I don't know which <laughs> that we have 16 yeah. we got 16 look at that it's crazy holy cow yeah so yeah so people you know apparently like taking photos with the iPhone and processing them it was interesting you know one of the most interesting things was uh, it was, and just to be clear, it wasn't just iPhones, iPhone and Android. The challenge was mobile phone and process the image within the software on your phone and submit right. that. Um, most people did that. And uh, it was interesting to see all the different, uh, I hadn't even heard of half of the pieces of software that people were using <laughs> to process these images. The only one, I'm like a Snapseed guy. That's it. I know it was Snapseed and the, the built-in software on the phone. That's all I use. Now I've downloaded like half a dozen other yeah. apps. To use. <laughs> I did too. Right? I did too. I, yeah, I'm like, what? I didn't know that was there. Yeah. yeah so. Yeah. So it's good. It's good. You want to dive in and start looking at them? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. All right. Let's see. Let me bring up Twit Pro here. Uh, there she blows. All right. The first one is from Jim Peters. And Jim says, the Hungarian parliament building in Budapest taken <coughs> from a riverboat on the Danaub. Um, he shot this with his iPhone XR with a slight cropping in Snapseed on uh, March 23rd, 2019. Let's take a look. Look at that. That's an iPhone shot. I, I know this is better than like the first couple digital cameras I used to shoot weddings with, <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. This is beautiful. This is, this is great how you can, you know, it, one of the interesting things about the iPhone is, is that it gets out of your way, you know, mm-hmm. and, and makes you a better photographer than you actually are, which, which is a loaded statement because what you want the camera to capture is what was in your mind's eye. And previously it had to be that you had to, in order to extract or tease out what was actually there, you had to have some, you know, some dark room chops or right. software chops in order to pull out those details, highlights exposed correctly. Now the iPhone just says, Hey, he wants parliament and I need some reflections <laughs> on the water there. I'm going to expose for that. Boom. You know, and then yeah. you can tease out more detail like he did in Snapseed and make it even more awesome. What do you think? Yeah. What do you think of the shot? I, you know, I think this is a, a testament to where we're going in photography with the chips and the software and the ability to do things. I mean, the shadow and the highlight detail in this image is phenomenal, right? I mean, this is easily a 16 by 20 that you could print and nobody would ever question what kind of camera it came off of. Yeah. So that's that's super cool. Um, the only only suggestion I have is I would probably crop off half of the water on the bottom. Um, Mm -hmm. I feel like, Mm -hmm. I feel like right now it's, it's, it's too centered. And I think if we, if we crop the bottom, it, it brings our focus in on the building and stuff. And I love the reflection. I just think we just have too much of it, but Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's me or does it feel like it's leaning to the right? I think it's, I think it's just a, it's an optical illusion because it's shot at a, at an off kilter angle, which I feel like that. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't feel that at all. You know, my my head is looking at the spires, and they they seem to all be perfectly vertical. So, so what you're saying is you have your head on straight, and I don't. Correct. Thank <laughs> you for reading my mind. I appreciate that. <laughs> it's less painful when I say it. You know. <laughs> I love it. I love it. But good shot, though. I love it. Yeah, it's great. All right, thank you, Jim Peters. He's down there by you, Ventura. Yeah, he's coming to F64. Oh, cool. All right, Joshua Sommerfeld, another person coming to F64 Live. Yeah. You can find it at F64Live.com. <laughs> <laughs> this is from Joshua. Gabby, the rescued sea turtle taken with his Galaxy S7 Edge at the South Carolina Aquarium, edited in Snapseed. Look at that. I dig it. I, I like the motion in the, at least in the front right fin and some of the other fish in the back. I think mm-hmm. that's super cool. Is that a blowfish up top or a puffer fish? See yeah, it looks like a puffer fish. Yeah. 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 
Love it. Love it. Yeah, this is this reminds me of the Monterey Bay Aquarium. Uh, we head down there from time to time. Have you been to that one? I have. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's fantastic. We have the Long Beach Aquarium that I've been to a couple times, and it's amazing. Yeah. I, I enjoy aquariums much more than I enjoy zoos for some reason. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they seem less cruel for some reason. I don't know. Yes. Yes. No, this is a nice shot. This is this is really cool. I, you know what? I, I was on the fence about the grain in this shot, but I actually like the grain. It adds to the, the, you know, I don't want to say realism because it's obviously real, but this was taken in an aquarium. Joshua wasn't scuba diving when he got this shot, but it, it doesn't really matter, right? That that he wasn't like what? Why being in a wetsuit and getting this exact same shot is somehow superior to this shot? I don't know. I think this is this is a pretty amazing shot, and it tells the story of the sea turtle. Yeah. Yeah. It's well composed. I like the crop. Um, you know, the coloring and everything is really nice. I like that we can see a differentiation from the, the turtle. So we see the turtle color and then the blue water in the background. Mm-hmm. Um, I love the fact the turtle's like, it feels like he's looking right at us, right? Yeah. Like, sup? Yeah. Yeah. That's what he's saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's got he a, poured. he's barely got an attitude in that, in that look at him. Yeah. Love it. Cool. It's kind of a Thanos look. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I've been watching. You know, Avengers Endgame came out on digital, so you know. I was yeah, I went to the theater to see it. You know, I'm so did fan. I. But I, but yeah, I went with a five year old, which was not a good <laughs> idea for a two and a half hour movie. Uh, Mark Harris is up next, and Mark says, uh, "I've been in Sedona, Arizona, at the 2019 Sedona Hummingbird Festival. One of the interesting things was a group capturing, banding, and releasing hummingbirds. Here, one of the banders checked the feet, wings, and tail feathers of one of the newly tagged birds. He made this with his iPhone 7 Plus. Now, had I not read that caption, I thought I would have. You know what I would thought." This is somebody getting ready to fly fish or something and, and, and fashioning a lure for fly fishing or something. Exactly. That was my exact thought. I could not figure out what it was. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm glad we have the description. It's <laughs> yeah, neat, exactly. It's I never would have pegged that as a bird. No, no. And how do you catch a hummingbird? That's what I... I <laughs> you know there was a movie by that name, right? Just saying. To catch yeah. a hummingbird. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I had to throw that in there. Please, Twip Pro, tell me you've seen the movie To Catch a Hummingbird. It was really good. Um, so on the merits of this shot, I, I see some solarization or, or posterization in there. Yeah, what, you think that's intentional or was it just the, because it was blown up from a smaller image? What do you yeah, think? I'm guessing it was cropped. I'm just guessing that it was cropped from a bigger image. Mm-hmm. So you can yeah. just see the resolution is starting to fall away a little bit. Yeah, yeah. That's what that's what iPhones do. They kind of build that resolution. Yeah, yeah, you can't really push it very far. What do you think about the shot in terms of color, right? Because you, you're famous or infamous for for saying that if it, well, we both say this, right? If the shot, if color's not helping the shot, then ditch it and right. see what it looks like. Do you think a black and white version of this shot would have been more effective? No, no. What would have happened is the because you have the the tone of the hands and the shirt. <clears throat> and even the even the the cloth that looks like a towel, they're very very close. So as soon as you turn this monochromatic, it's going to go flat. Mm-hmm. You would have to actually go in and and pull down the the blue or the cyan color and bring up the magenta or vice versa. You'd really have to work it mm-hmm. to get that separation because the colors are separating us now, not the not the the density. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of—I was gonna say—I kind of like it with color because the the human flesh-colored hands in there. You know, it, it kind of shows the dexterity of the hands because these hummingbirds, I assume, are really fragile, right? Right. And these giant human hands in there, you know, checking out the feathers in the feet and all that stuff. It's kind of it's kind of remarkable. Right. All right. Cool. Thank you, Mark Harris. Next shot is from Armando Brook, and Armando says. Uh, he said he doesn't use his iPhone five to make photos, but he. But I love one app from Adobe, the capture. So there's an, uh, oh, Adobe capture. Um, this image he made with that software uh, from a plasma ball lamp. We were able to create incredible patterns with just one click. Oh, yeah. this is right up your alley, man. A plasma ball. <laughs> Look at this. That is kind of cool, though. Look at that. That is, <clears throat> that's a, you know, you could step and repeat that all day long, couldn't you? It's almost a Gucci yep. pattern. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's what that app does. You can take a photo of something and then you can create these these, you know, cool patterns where they repeat over and over. Yeah. So yeah, it's very cool. I mean, it's a it's a it's a really neat pattern. Probably something to to use in a composite or a background or a mm-hmm. texture on something like a floor, you know. Yeah, or behind a green screen or something. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I should have done that. I should have downloaded it and put it behind me. <laughs> yeah, you should have. That would have been cool. Yeah. Well, good shot, Armando. Thank you. Thank you. It shows the creativity. Isn't that interesting though? Let me let me switch the cameras back to us for a second. Um the uh you know, the if you rewind back to the days before the iPhone, right? Back when we had the Palm Trio and you know, right. sidekicks and, and all that stuff. And then we got the first iPhone. I remember getting that thing and I was thinking, you know what? This is this is a computer. It's got it's got a screen, it's got a processor, it's got I.O. It's got, you know, you could probably right. do some really cool stuff with this one day. And literally now yeah. these things are there are more of these phones on the planet than there are humans, I think. Right. So Yeah, yeah. I mean yeah. it's less of a phone, isn't it? I mean, it's more of a camera and a, and a capture device and yeah. an organizer and yeah, it's definitely true. I, you know, we were, my daughter and I, we were in Mammoth and we were photographing and she was standing next to me and she had an older iPhone, like an iPhone seven and I had the iPhone 10 and, and our, we both lifted our cameras up and she's like, Oh my God, I'm getting the new phone <laughs> because <laughs> the colors and the, the reality was so much better on the newer phone that yeah. she upgraded her phone for the camera. Yeah. Yeah. That's why that's I upgrade awesome. mine. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. It's crazy. That's where things are now, though. You know, Working yeah. around with supercomputers in our pockets. All right. Next shot is from Thomas Aaron. Thomas says, prong horns. This is iPhone XS at 10x zoom. The iPhone doesn't have the, the Wavos to handle an image like this at such a distance, but I was able to process it so that it took on a bit of a painted look, which mm-hmm. I like. Yeah, iPhones don't have iPhones don't have Wables Rancheros. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is cool. This does look like this is like water painting. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say when I first saw it. I thought, oh, how cool! You know, somebody you know ran an effect on there to do that, but he, which he did. I mean, but combining that with the zoom, um, this is fantastic. I could see this printed. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I could see it too. Yeah, printed and framed. And you know the interesting thing about that, I think we're probably at the last vestiges of this whole, you know, the 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 bias against uh, pho- or photos taken with phones because at some point it's not going to matter, right? It's like Right. You know, it does. A, yeah, it's a great shot. It does. You know, why do you have to qualify it with? And it was taken on a phone. You know, it doesn't matter. It was. Right. It was taken with a two thousand dollar camera. <laughs> That's what it was taken with. So. Yep. Yeah. It do, it doesn't matter. I mean, you know, you consider how good the phones are now compared to shooting on thirty five millimeter film. Mm-hmm. You know, the the dynamic range that you have on a phone, the the capabilities you have. I mean it's it's truly it's truly phenomenal and this idea that we're just transcending the equipment and just just focusing on the images is really where i would love for us to be you know yeah. yep i agree i agree we're getting there we're getting there yep or at least generations after us will get there. <laughs> <laughs> all right next shot is from mike doran and mike says uh, I created this image while parked on the side of the road in southern Idaho on my road trip with my brothers. I created this image with my iPhone XR adjusted in Snapseed. Look at that. You got to love Snapseed, man. Come on. That's yeah. to love. Yeah. Look at that. I love- Look at that. Come on. <clears throat> like, come on. That that was like, think back like 15 years ago. Did you <laughs> Do you think you would ever have gotten anything near this level of quality from something that you could slide into your back pocket and forget no. about. No. no, I mean, the, the, I was shooting like a D1H, Nikon D1H. It was like four megapixels back then, and mm-hmm. the, these clouds would be blown out. Like <laughs> there, <laughs> there was no way. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, this is this is pretty fantastic. I like it. And like you said, like the the what's also coming along is the quality of the camera, but also the algorithms and the the computational photography aspect of this stuff that we don't even see. Like you have no idea what Apple is doing and for better or for worse, but you have no idea what they're doing to this image before they even show it to you. Right. Right. You just think you're awesome. (laughs) (laughs) You're like, look how good I am. I got the perfect exposure every time. Every time. Yeah. 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 
But can I yeah. can I channel you on this one? I think I know what you're going to say on this shot. <laughs> of course. <laughs> I'm going, I, I've got my, my legs crossed, uh, going into channeling Troy Miller mode on this shot. Troy would have said, crop up from the bottom, uh, <laughs> because we don't need that corner of the asphalt there. Um, and the horizon looks like it shifted a little bit to the right, so you would have straightened that. Um, but you would have cropped up significantly from the bottom, I think, and make the emphasis the clouds uh, up top because those are dramatic. Yeah. And yeah. you may, I don't know, I, you're, you're, the colors are pretty vibrant in this shot, but you may have gone black and white on this with, a, with kind of a high contrast look <laughs> just to make it pop. And throw a so little I, vignette I, and a key line around it, right? <laughs> And the next critique, I will simply be a puppet and cut out a picture of my face here, and Frederick will mimic my voice. Hey, man, I, you know. <laughs> I love clouds to be black and white. Um, yeah. I, I, there's so much texture and tonality in them that, yes, I, I always love clouds to be black and white. This is wonderful because the colors complement each other. So I love the green and the yellow and the grass and the blue sky. I would definitely cut off most of the <clears throat> the grass area, though, so we see those rolling hills mm -hmm. and the clouds. I think that's the stronger part of this image. Yeah, and straighten the horizon, right? And straighten the horizon, yeah. yeah. Which is easy oh. in Snapseed. It's got a straighten tool. I, I think it's built just like any other app. It's built into the uh, the crop tool. I right. think it is, or maybe maybe there's a rotate tool. Anyway, it's easy to to just draw a line to straighten out the image. But, yeah, I, I would love any of the Twit members to chime in with software that they use on their phone, even if they didn't participate with an image or uh, you know use it this time. I'd love to know what other people are using. Yeah. Um, because I think I spent like 25 bucks buying software. You and me both, man, right there. <laughs> right there. I need that. Yeah. I have a folder on my phone of just photo apps. And now it's now it's burgeoning. Larger. <laughs> yeah, it's larger. You know? All right. Thank you, Mike Doran, for that. Mike, you haven't submitted in a while. I'm glad you, you're jumping back in the fray. Yep. All right. Uh, Eric Pronsky is up next. And Eric says... Kinderjik Sunset, pronounced Kinderdike. Okay, Kinderdike. Straight off the iPhone Camera X JPEG, imported into Lightroom Mobile. He applied auto tone adjustments. He used the radial brush to pull up the shadows on the windmill. And he says it's hard to paint with your pinky finger on the <laughs> phone. That's why you need one of those little styluses or a little styli. Um, I also added a uh, slight dark gradient in Lightroom Modal Mobile to the bottom of the image to dampen the posterization of the color uh, in the water. Yep, I noticed that. Um, I used the default iPhone camera settings. Uh, the camera chose ISO 40, uh, 1 17th of a second. At least that's what the metadata said. said uh, F1.8 at 4 millimeters. He said, okay, so let's go on and take a look at this shot. Yeah, I noticed the posterization in there. I Yeah, I, I assume it was probably a bit more obvious before he did some surgery on it. But yeah, it's not it's not egregious, I don't think. No, no. And, and you know, having darkened it down like he did, it just it looks more like a reflection than it does bad poster posterization. Mm -hmm. So yeah, good yeah. call. Good call. Yeah, it's really nice. I, I really love this image. And I'm kind of experimenting by looking at it with two kind two different crops. One one being, you know, cropping most of the bottom off and leaving in the reflection of the base of the windmill and making it more of a horizontal image. Because um, what 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 I struggle with is the negative space in the lower right. Mm. So that's for I mean, text. I, that's for text. That's for text. Yeah. Right. Of course. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, come come to wherever this is. <laughs> um, Denmark or whatever. Yeah. Uh, yeah this would be this would be great. I, I love the image the way it is and cropping off the right. I'm kind of seeing it where it's a really tall vertical and it's just all windmill. Mm -hmm. So, but with the, with the two windmills in the background. Yeah. 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 And the full reflection if we go vertical. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's subjective. Yeah. I could see it either way. Reflections are always hard because you know, you want to, you really want to include all that reflection and then, and then you realize like, okay, but what about the rest of the image? Mm -hmm. You know, I got this big frame, with not much in there so at yeah, least for if there me, was something would... in that in that big blank space of water like you know a couple with a rowboat or something that would yeah been, yeah a that would have added a little bit of weight to that side otherwise yeah, yeah you're right yeah yeah cool all right, nice. all right next shot is from mike doran mike put another <laughs> one in here mike's on a roll what's going on 
and we'll allow two since Mike hasn't been around for a while. So uh, he says he created this with his iPhone XR with adjustments in Snapseed. Pretty girl. Look at that brown girl with a with a red bra and uh, what is that? What do you call those? A shawl? Would that be a shawl she has on or sweater? Yeah, I don't know. I don't uh, wear them, so I don't know what they're called. You don't wear them in public. That's what you're. Doing. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, that's that's two or three times. You I'm stop. good, man. Wait till wait till we start having beers at F64. Yeah, it's... I know, I know. <laughs> All downhill. I'm gonna have to put on my bulletproof vest. <laughs> exactly. So, what do you think about the shot? I mean, from a from a portrait standpoint, I know it's kind of it's more of a. This is kind of in the snapshot vein. Um, um, but it, you know, this, this is a, it's a portrait, right? So what, what do you think of it from, from a, putting on your wedding and portraiture hat? I mean, I love the, I love the pose and the casualness and, you know, the look in her face and, and I mean, she's beautiful and it's sexy and it definitely, definitely comes across really well, uh, uh, you know, because it's on an iPhone and because maybe it was cropped or because of the low light, you know, it's slightly out of focus and it's a little bit soft. Um, but you know, that's the challenges with the phone, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But other than that, I mean, it's, it's a, it's a fantastic portrait. I love the fact she has a hand. It's not cut off or anything down there. So. <laughs> amputated <laughs> not it seems is this one is it me or is it leaning a little bit to the right it is leaning to the right yeah, yeah. You, you can you can see from the cabinet on the left and the corner post right behind her and mm -hmm. i think it is leaning leaning to the left yeah yeah this is interesting and this 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 is not not that it applies to this photo but this brings up a topic that i'm going to be tackling on twip in the coming weeks um around the whole photographers working with models. I mean, we've tackled it a couple times, but there's been a couple of incidents that have popped up uh, in the news, not with any twit people, but in the news about mm -hmm. some craziness that's happening in the industry. I wanted to draw a circle around that and, and shine a light on it. So right. it, should be, it should be interesting. Uh, cool. Mike Doran. I love these iPhone shots, man. You know yeah, what, Mike? I don't know if what is. Let me go back to this one. The iPhone XR. He shot those. And yeah, does the iPhone XR have portrait mode? Do you know? I I I think so. Isn't it? I think it's the same as as a ten. You know, okay. the iPhone yeah. ten. Yeah, I thought so too. Because it does. Because I think it needs the dual lenses to do portrait mode and oh, portrait maybe. mode just portrait mode just you know just simulates bokeh and throws no it. then it doesn't yeah then it, it doesn't because it only has one lens oh, okay because that is that has got to be the most fantastic feature i mean and it's got to have portrait photographer scared shitless seriously because <laughs> <laughs> you you know you put that thing in portrait mode aim it out of you know, create, compose a portrait and then click edit when you're done. And it gives you a slider, a depth of field slider that you can just drag your finger on to change the blurriness of the background behind your subject. And it just works. I remember the first iteration of it was a little bit iffy. You could kind of look and see what it was doing. But now every time it seems to be spot on when I use that feature. It's crazy. Wow. You know what? That's not a feature I've played with. I have some images of me that I took of myself in Indiana in that mode. I'm going to have to figure that out. Oh, yeah, man. You're going to love it. I'm telling you, you are going to love that feature. It's crazy. Oh, I'm going to be so distracted now. <laughs> Shiny object. All right. Next shot up is from... Troy Miller. Yeah, yeah. Troy says a sunset reflection shot on his <laughs> iPhone 10 and edited with ProCam. Let's take a look. That's gorgeous, man. That is gorgeous. Yeah, I was super surprised that this turned out. We were actually at dinner, and this just goes to show the power of having, you know, an a phone with you mm -hmm. and the best camera is the one that you have and <clears throat> we walked out of the restaurant and the, the, we were watching the sunset and it was just amazing and I'm like, you know, here we go. Photograph it with the phone. Don't have cameras. Why yeah. not? Why not? It shouldn't matter, right? It shouldn't matter. You should. Nope. Yeah, you know, like I said, we're going to get to that point where it's not a compromise to use the phone. It's just a. Why not? It's a choice. It's another tool that you have in your arsenal. It mm -hmm. used to be. I used to say this in talks all the time that it was. It was almost. You know, shooting with mobile phone photography, and I think I I said this to uh, to to a couple. Of, I think I think I said it on stage once that shooting with phones was was kind of like almost losing the shot because you think you got the shot, but then you really didn't because you got a poor representation of what that shot 
should and could have been, you know, right. like your baby's first steps and all this other stuff. You're like throwing these moments away by shooting them with inferior optics. But now that's not the case at all. And it's almost the opposite. Now you could probably get a better shot with your phone than you could by, you know, cranking out your camera, turn it on, make sure you're in your right mode, get your <laughs> aperture set right, all that stuff, and then click, and then the moment's over. Now right. you just, you know, f- flick open your phone in camera mode and tap the button and you got it. So Yep. I love it. Love it. Gotta love photography. All right, next shot is from Michael DeRay. Michael says, let sleeping dogs lie. He shot this with his LG G7 Thin Q ISO 50 at uh, f1.6 at a half second shutter speed, frame and slight level adjustments in Snapseed. Snapseed is is very popular. Yep. If you have not downloaded Snapseed, you're no friend of mine. I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's free. Come on. I mean, and it's on. I have it then. Jeez. It's on Android and iOS, and it's free. So there's no. Mm-hmm. And if you like photography and you're listening and watching this, come on, you got to have that app. Yeah, so. yeah. So I give I give double points for uh, black and white and creative border. So. Uh huh. I knew it. Pandering, <laughs> Michael. That's blatant pandering, man. Come on. <laughs> But it's good. I mean, it's it's really good. It looks really nice. I mean, I just I love the fact that, uh, you know, you've got that paw coming out right into the corner. Yeah. And yeah. He's just the, the puppy's totally chill in there. And then we have this nice treatment on it and the black and white's handled really well. I think it's I think it's very nice. He's got those Scooby Doo ears going on. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he does. Yeah. Do you, what about the hot spot above the dog's head there? Does that bother you at all? You know, yeah. I mean, if if we can keep detail, it's it's always best, I think, to try to keep detail in an image if it's possible. I don't know that that's possible with you know the way he shot it. Mm-hmm. Um, but it doesn't. I mean, it doesn't ruin the image by no. any means. No, no, it's a cool shot. Frameable, frameable. Yep, yep. Let sleeping dogs lie. All right. Next shot is from Joel Figueroa, and Joel says. An iPhone 8 Plus in Venice, edited with Lightroom Mobile. I'm assuming this is the real Venice and not the Vegas. Venice. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, this looks like the real Venice. <laughs> I know. I'm looking at the sky there. Is that sky real or is it painted on the ceiling? <laughs> <laughs> is it lit? Yeah. <laughs> Did somebody turn that on? Exactly. The computers. Because there's a scene just like this in the Venice, in Venice inside the, uh, in the hotel in Vegas, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, because off to the right is a bunch of shops and malls and all this. <laughs> no, this is cool. This is a cool shot. What do you think compositional, well, co- composition wise of this shot? Is it too busy? Is it is it tell the story? What do you think? I, I think it's a little busy and I, I feel like it's off center because I feel like the center of the arch is the center of the should be the center of the frame. So, you know, if we crop the left side and crop up from the bottom just above that far that first far left post. So we leave that boat or that ferry in underneath the bridge. I think I think that's I think that's the image. Right? Yeah, yeah. No, I agree. And I agree. you know, it's it's a wonderful composition. I would be interested to play with this in black and white. I know the sky is kind of cool, but the architecture, the repeating patterns of those windows and the bridge with the people on the top, um, the reflection might might look good in black and white. Might. Yeah, yeah. It would be worth a shot just to play around with it, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Really cool. All right, Joel Figueroa, thank you. Thanks for posting, man. All right. And Amy Brooks is up next. And Amy says, coming home uh, to the Northwest last year, didn't realize the impact of the smoke from the forest fires until flying over the Rockies. Shot this with an iPhone out of the plane window, experimented a bit before landing on black and white. Looking forward to Troy's thoughts on if that was the right way to go. Troy. Take it away. Was that the right way to go? <laughs> yes. This is this is gorgeous. I absolutely love this um, be, because we can figure out what it is. So it's it's abstract, which I love abstract, and it's abstract enough that when I look at it, I have to think about what it would be. I don't know that it's smoke. It could be clouds. It could be anything. Um, but if you know that mountain, that view, mm-hmm. it, it just it's fantastic. It's a little bit slided till the right Mm -hmm. just a little bit yeah i saw that yeah yeah just a little bit but um no this is definitely out of the out of the collection this is definitely one of my favorites for the abstract 
um, that it is. I, mm-hmm. I, I just, I like that a lot. That's really sort of. Yeah, no, I echo problem. all that. Yeah, it's a, it's a great shot. I like the treatment. I like the border. Um, exceptional job on this. Exceptional yeah. job. Um, just with that one, with the one knit of the rotate it slightly to the left to straighten the horizon line out. Right. Or that, they could just, that's the curve of the earth right there, you know. Because, oh, is it? Oh, okay. Yeah, because yeah, we live in a ball. So, Are you sure about that? <laughs> <laughs> I've heard theories that, uh, you know, this, we, we live on a, a plate, just saying. <laughs> All right. Just on the back of a turtle. Yeah, there you go. There you go. I've seen that. All right. Eric Joseph is up next. And Eric Joseph says, uh, kind of has that Norman Rockwell feeling. This is Red Mill in Clinton, New Jersey. iPhone XR with filter. doesn't recall which one. From the native camera app and edited in photos and camera plus two. All right, let's take a look. Man, there's so many images in here. Um, yeah, it does normal. Yeah, the, the the dad and son make this Norman Rockwell 100% and the red barn. This is timeless. Yeah. And there's nothing in here that could give you an indication of what when this was shot. This could have been yesterday or, you know, two decades ago. Yeah, yeah. No, this is beautiful. I, I was I was playing with like crops in my head because because I, I I love the idea of the we'll call father and son fishing right and I, I my thing is like I would love to crop it so it's just them and mm-hmm. then then there's this other idea that I really love the the mill in there so maybe some dodging and burning to bring the background down to bring them up would really help with that balance too but it's yeah. this is wonderful this is really cool yeah yeah this is a really cool shot. Yeah, and it just goes to show, you know, if you don't have your gear with you, just, you know, pull that phone out and take a couple shots and see right. what you get, right? So it couldn't, couldn't hurt. Right. Yeah. Very well done. I, I, yeah, like I love the lot. color the color palette, too, because it's kind of warm, um, semi-saturated colors, but but muted at the same time. The only thing that, right. that, that um, is a little bit bothersome, but though, you know, it's not horrible, is the brightness in the blown out sky in the upper right. Right, right. I think that, you know, when we start playing with, uh, you know, sensors as small as what's in the phone, those type of things are just we have to be aware of and try to mitigate them as we photograph them. Yeah. You know, um, try to do in in camera HDRs, try to underexpose and bring it up just like what you do with like slide film. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, that your latitude is super narrow. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, on slide it was a plus or minus a third of a stop. I think. Yeah, yeah. So something crazy. Cool. All right, Eric Joseph, thank you, sir. All right, and our next shot is from Craig Stamfley. Craig says, definitely more of a challenge to try and get some light trails with a with a smartphone. However, it was very enjoyable all the same. He shot this with his iPhone XS Max long exposure app, another one that I downloaded. Yeah, yeah. Uh, tripod, phone holder, ISO 24, one second exposure edited within the Photos app. The composition is pretty much a shot with just minor straightening made to make sure the top edge of the bottom arrow was level and to get the arrow just about to touch the edge to create some tension. At least that's what I'm telling myself. Let's take it. <laughs> yeah, I think it no, worked. I love it. I, love I, it. I, think, I think you're spot on with that arrow kind of pointing at the edge of the frame there. That's very clever. Yeah, very clever. I mean, it, it, you know, look, if you, just, if you just, you know, hold your hand up and crop off that arrow at the bottom, just, just a little bit of it, it, it feels wrong, mm-hmm. you know? Like it, mm-hmm. Just being right there. That's really cool. So it's it's awesome to see that intention go into an image like this. I, I love this. I shoot a lot of motion with my phone. I use the um, live photos, and then I go in and I do the blur mm. and uh, the long exposure setting feature. And I love that. You know, we're gonna have to do more of these because I'm, I'm really digging this uh, this emissions from smartphones yeah. these are these are you know legitimately these are some of the the best if not equally as good as the best we've had shot with you know all the high-end gear yeah yeah i know especially people that submit that shots that were made with nikon z series cameras <laughs> <laughs> that's four that's four for four <laughs> all right 
was like brothers, you know, brothers tease each other. I didn't say anything other. about micro four thirds or small chips, you know. I just oh but, yeah, because I have I have a couple of micro four thirds cameras and a Lumix S one full frame. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> All right. Uh, next shot is from Lamb. Lamb says, I have no idea what to shoot for the photo contest restricted to photos shot with mobile phones until I saw this on the dining table shot with, the, oh, the Oppo F1S. Those are crazy cameras. Uh, model A1601 uh, in camera preset mode, yellow and vignette. Let's take a look. Yeah, this Love is a shadows. great lifestyle type photo. This is, mm -hmm. this is timeless. This yep. is amazing. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I love the spiral of the plate. I love the reflections mm -hmm. uh, of the shadow, the reflections and the shadows and the chopsticks, because the, the worn chops, chopsticks on the plate, you know, and the food is balanced. It looks tasty, right? It looks slightly oversaturated. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah, this, this reminds me of, of Kai's photo a little bit, right? Because Kai's was very simple. And, you know, maybe we need to do like food for one of the themes. Cause Done next week. Some of these are good. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> you heard it. That's how we pick our themes. Next week oh, is, is food. <laughs> is that? Oh, that's our next theme. Okay. <laughs> yep. Food done. Thanks for doing my homework for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I I'm not a food photographer and I don't shoot food a lot, but to see these shots, like in what Kai did last month or last week, like that's really good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. No, it is really good. Really good. I'm I'm a I'm a big fan of this shot. This is one of my favorites, I think. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. All right. All right. Thank you, Lamb, for that. And we're moving right along to the next shot. Oh, uh, where are we? Okay, here we go. Oh, it's the last shot. It's from Candy Shivley. Candy says water walker made with slow shutter cam on iPhone XS. Take a look at this one. This is one of my favorites as well. Yeah, I love the muted colors. I love the ghostly figure. I yeah, I love the motion. Yeah, there's a lot to like about the shot. Yeah, exactly. I, the composition is handled very, very well. And I mean, there's so much story in here. You know, there's just just enough of the the person to know that you know they're there walking around. I think it feels like they're near the water. Even if you didn't you didn't tell me, I would feel that. And then you've got, you know, that darker spot along the horizon. So I have this sense of this of place. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's this motion and abstractness. So it could be a dream scene. It could be, you know, it could really be anything. There's even room for copy for somebody who would want to put copy. On <laughs> yeah, that. right on the right side there. <laughs> yeah, I wonder how this would look printed and framed. I bet it would look spectacular. Yeah, printed on like a like an art paper or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, good work, Candy. I love this. I love this shot a lot. All right. So we're at the end of the road here. You got any favorites? Bum, bum, bum. I have a favorite. <clears throat> well, you know, I, I do I do tend to be drawn to black and white. So can uh -oh. you guess? <laughs> I let me let me guess. Which <laughs> which one? Let me let me pull it up in the browser and then I'll go to it. Let's see. Uh, I think it's going to be the same favorite that I had. So I'm thinking you're picking this one. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That was it. Yep. I love this shot. This shot, even with the, the slightly off kilter horizon, I like this shot. So, yeah, yeah. I, I think it's just the abstractness of it and the, the story that I, that I, I feel like when I'm in this image. Mm hmm. Yep. Cool. All right. Well, that's it. So we have our favorite. Um, this no, this was not Candy Shively. See, I was going to say Candy Shively because I love that shot as well. Yep. Uh, this is Amy Brooks. Congratulations, Amy Brooks. We Yay. love this shot. We love this shot a lot. We love them all. We yeah. love all of them. Yeah. Good job, everyone. Good, 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 good job. I love it. I love it. All right, man. So uh, we're at the end of this critique session. Any parting shots or parting thoughts you want to share with the audience? Uh, you know, F64 Live, if you guys are in the area, uh, we're in Southern California at Corona. You can check us out at F64Live.com. Frederick's going to be there doing a keynote. I have no idea what it's going to be. <laughs> but it'll be good. He promises. Yeah, it'll it'll either be good or it'll, it'll be the last time that you let me keynote at f 64 <laughs> 
<laughs> it'll be fine. It'll be no, fine. It'll be it's going to be your stand up of making fun of me. I know that's what it's going to be. No, it's going to be good. You know, last year was you are not a photographer. This year is going to be something equally as cerebral. So nice. Nice. Yeah. I like it. I yeah, like it it's a lot. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. Uh, and I've what's been, our next theme? Our next theme is your favorite topic on the planet. Food. Food. Or fire. <laughs> we food. did fire already. Well, it could be fire as applied to food, you know, but well, this food. Is true. Mm-hmm. Yep. Food. Food, food, food. I, you know what? I'm interested to see what Lamb's going to put in because, you know, because there's some interesting foods over wherever he is. So I want to see that. But yeah, food. And feel free. You can shoot food with your DSLR, with your mirrorless camera, with your smartphone. Uh, yeah. If you want to sketch it and scan it, you can do that. But something food related, submit right. that into the uh, into the critique, and we'll talk about it. And just Troy, I think you're gonna have to make sure that you've eaten before you before next <laughs> week this time, because if you're if you're not hungry, you'll be hungry after. I'm yeah, sure. normally I don't eat before these, so yeah, that'd be a good idea. You're probably gonna want to eat. I'm just gonna say that. <laughs> cool. All right, man. Well, thank you. Thanks for taking the time to do this again. Yeah. And thanks to all the Twip Pro members who submitted their awesome smartphone images into this week's critique. Fantastic work, everybody. Fantastic. Yeah, good turnout. Yeah. And if you haven't checked out F64 Live, head over to F64Live.com and check out the awesome conference that this guy <laughs> is organizing. <laughs> <laughs> all right, man. I'll see you next week. All right. Take care. Thanks. All right. Peace. This is Twitter.